Hi everybody, it's Tatiana and today I am coming to do the Burden of Proof tag. This was created by Buddha Bowler and I was tagged by Jacqueline from six minutes or at six minutes for me who is the person that Britta Bowler and I'm spacing on her channel name right now my bad created the tag for in celebration of Jacqueline passing the bar and so these are questions that are based on Texas law which is the state where Jacqueline passed the bar I have my questions I don't have the books uh, to show you so I'm going to try to remember hopefully to take the time to do the picture in picture situation uh, because yeah the, the I don't have the books okay question number one is billable hours a book in which money plays an important role and I actually have two books for this I have two books for a couple of these questions and I'm just going to give you both of them because some of these questions I don't have an answer for so the first book that I'm going to share with you is the million million dollar divorce by RM Johnson this follows the story of a couple who get married and the man I can't even remember the main character's first name the male character's first name but they he gets married to his girlfriend with the you know hope to have a family and she convinces him to wait three years but after they get married to, before they start trying to have kids he's like okay as long as we have a family then <laughs> she can't handle kids and so he wants to divorce her as a result of the fact that she can't have kids and I think she knew she couldn't have kids before they got married but there's a problem because he's a millionaire and so he doesn't want to lose half of his fortune in divorcing her along with the you know uh, spousal support and all of that stuff that he would have to give out monthly so what he does is try to concoct the scheme to have her violate the infidelity clause in their prenuptial agreement that's what that story is basically about and the shenanigans that go along with when that happens i read this book years ago it's very telling of how much i enjoyed it considering i remember so much at this point it is the first book in a series i want to say there are two books after the first book but i have not read the other two books i was fine with ending the story at that point so but yeah the second book that I'm going to mention is actually a graphic novel series. It is one of my favorite graphic novel series and that is the Lazarus series which is written by Greg Ruka and it is a dystopian futuristic graphic novel series where uh, those who are the U.S. is run by families instead of having states each family has a sector and what your value and your worth is within the sectors is determined by the amount of money that you have whether you have the status to be a fam part of the family to work with the family anybody who does not have enough money or enough prestige to be someone who can work be in or work for work with the family is considered waste they don't matter uh and so yeah that i love 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 that graphic novel series i need them to get on the ball and like do the next installation of the actual story <sighs> anywho question number two pacta sunt servana a modern classic with a legal twist that everybody should read i have not read a lot of modern classics and i did not want to mention a modern classic that's already been mentioned because there are very popular modern classics uh, so I didn't want to mention those. So I'm going to go with Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury and the legal twist in that is that reading is illegal and you have a cop who's a burner who ends up liking books. Question number three, Construction Law, a book that dazzled you with its complete complex structure. And this could be either the structure of the book, how the book is written or a building within the book and I have picked a book that I believe is a combination of the two and that is Rosewater by Tade Thompson. I just did a review of that. I will link it in the description box below if you have not checked that out but that book has a complex structure and how Thompson chose to write the story as well as it is its central focus somewhat is this mysterious biodome that 
Rosewater, the city is built or the town is built around. So two birds, one book. Question number four, the Franklin Rule of Evidence, a book with an unreliable narrator. And for that, I picked Parable of the Talents by Octavia Butler. I cannot tell you why the character, is, the narrator is unreliable because that's like a spoiler. But in my opinion, the narrator is highly unli unreliable because of their issues with the person that they're talking about in that story. Question number five, Roe v. Wade, a book with a strong female character. Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. Can't be surprised. Lauren Olamina is my, like, I love her. Absolutely love her. If you have not read the Parable Duology, which ended up being a duology because she died before she wrote any, any more books in that series but if you have not read that duology it's freaking amazing the world has america has gone to shit and this teenager ventures out on her own to try after dealing with ridiculous amounts of loss and fear ventures out on her own and tries to create a new life for herself based on a belief that she has created for herself and she gets these other people who are trying to figure out how to live in this new world she gets them to come along with her as she's going on her journey and she does this under very dangerous circumstances one being female and so yeah question number six grand jury a book with a grand set of characters and this could be one character with a big personality or a character with a book with multiple points of view and for that I picked The Queen of the Night by Alexander Chi. If you do not recall from my review when I read when I talked about this book this book was not necessarily a book that was a favorite of mine but one thing that I really did enjoy about the book is how it thrust you into the uh, opera uh, society in Italy during the time period i want to say it's in like the early 1900s i think that's right and the main character is an opera diva and so those if you don't know those like kinds of people especially during back then back in that time frame they had big personalities and they were these they were divas for a reason because they were exceptionally good they were the best at their craft and along with that came diva attitudes <laughs> And yeah, I really enjoyed the opulence of that time period and the secret that this main character who is a diva, who has these diva ideas and mindset is trying to keep hidden because it tells of her prior to her reaching her diva status. So, okay. Question number seven, Malpractice, a book you loved that features an, unreli an unlikable character, preferably a professional. And for that, I, I, I have Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, Adichie, however you say her last name, my bad. Uh, and it features the main character's father, who is an asshole, but he's very well loved by the people in their community and by other members of their family. But in the immediate family, he is a very abusive ass. And now we are on to the bonus questions. Question eight, a South African author you love. I don't have an answer for this question because I have not read any books, I don't think, by South African authors. If I have, I don't know that they're South African, which is a problem. I do have Disgrace by J.M. Coetzee, which is up on this top shelf up here, but I haven't read it yet, which is why it's on the shelf behind me. So I don't have an answer to that question. Question nine, a book about animals in an unusual setting. I kind of picked The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis, which is book three in the Chronicle of Nar Chronicles of Narnia series but any of those books really the entire chronicles of narnia series because narnia is an alternate dimension and there are animals who talk and animals who talk is great are great grammar okay um question number 10 partners in crime 
tag some people. So I am going to tag, I have my list since I wrote these questions down, I wrote down my people too. I'm going to tag Cynthia over at Book Whimsy. I'm going to tag Freeform Lady because she hasn't done a video in a while. Where you at chick? I'm going to tag Kay from KT because she hasn't done a video for a while. I know where she is but we miss you on here so do a video please. Do this. I'm going to tag Jordan at Left on Red. Same thing. Where you at chick? I'm going to tag Morgan Gale. I'm going to tag Stephanie at Time to Read exclamation point and I'm going to throw this out here. She may not have time to do the tag because she's been very busy uh, with life and she had like a slew of videos that she put out at one in one time frame. So she may be taking a little break, but I'm going to throw this out here anyway. Dee Dee at Brown Girl Reading. And that is the end of this tag. I feel like I flew through that and I talked really, really fast, but that's the energy that I have for today. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a good week, weekend, whenever you see this video. Peace out.